Hey you, so on this video, should you buy high, one ounce <laughs> high premium gold coins? I'm just going to be going over my thoughts and opinions. Me and the owner of a large amount of one ounce high premium gold coins, as you can see in the background. I just wanted to give what I could see as the pros and maybe the cons and just the common misconceptions that I've heard when referring to one ounce gold high premium coins. So I'd like to say before we get into this, if you haven't done so already and you like what you hear slash see, please do go ahead and subscribe. And also let me know your thoughts and opinions on one ounce high premium gold coins. Are you a buyer? Do you believe in them? Do you think they're a waste of time and space? Let me know your thoughts and opinions down below in the comments. So as you can see, I've got a load of one ounce gold coins in the background. All modern stuff, once again, it's going to be my own comfort zone, what I decided to pick up when I was picking up. I initially, I've not mentioned this before, but I have, um, came into this just on the foundation basis. So it was, you know, um, a load of silver foundation and then got into gold foundation. Foundation for me was one ounce gold, minute coins. I then got, you know... <laughs> um, lured to the dark side of collecting stash stacking into the numismatic collector coins and so when it's i'm looking at this stuff i'm working with my own comfort zone and that's always going to be the modern stuff so everything i'm going to be referring to here is going to be modern depending on your view or standpoint whether you like or don't like let me know your thoughts and opinions so once again um looking at these here i'll go over what i've heard um i believe is a common misconception when you're referring to the one ounce um, high premium gold coin. So I so say something like this, for instance, it wasn't initially purchased as a high premium coin. And that's going to be all of the raw one ounce um, gold Queen's Beast coins I've got. Here. I even believe this one also was a purchase. This is the double eagle high relief coin, American Liberty. Um, you know, this one here was purchased mainly because it was a coin that I liked. I saw it a lot, definitely wanted it in my stack and had the opportunity to pick it up. And so I did. Outside of that, I'll be talking about how I expect and what I expect from the rest of these coins. And that's going to be for them to appreciate over time, most definitely. But, you know, as mentioned, the common misconceptions that I've heard when people are referring to this one ounce high premium stuff is that you know it costs way too much and mainly even maybe with the lower stuff is you're going to struggle to find somebody to resell this stuff to if it does ever go up in price it's just gonna outprice lots of people and even currently now in today's modern times um you know there's not a lot of people that can afford that and you know who you're going to sell it to and it's a large chunk a tiny pool of buyers and why i say it's a misconception is because i believe my view on that in general is that currently i don't believe gold and silver are fashionable and that's what it boils down to they're not fashionable um they've rightfully so taken their place either as some would say an industrial metal when you're referring to silver or gold is just wealth wealth that no one really understands or knows hasn't really taken the time to fully understand or know but they know it represents wealth it represents something that they don't fully understand maybe countries stack it or banks hoard it or you know but it's just not fashionable um i think that there is a lot of things out there and a lot of people especially referring to millennials right now that are currently dealing with in things and i've done videos on this in the past that are nowhere near um intrinsic value and even i would even say fashionable or value itself that is they're they're making ridiculous insane amounts of profits and, and money on these things and looking at that i would say fashion straight away once again i've already mentioned um kids in the uk and in america and um, sneaker trading and these are trainers shoes sneakers that <clears throat> you're purchasing for under 200 dollars and going on to sell upwards of five thousand ten thousand dollars you know fashion is playing a massive role but fashion also has that thing where it's in fashion you know it's out in the forefront you've got your influencers talking about it. it's being pushed it's a massive way of life today another thing where there's large amounts of wealth involved and it can be put out there is going to be something like luxury cars so you know when you're looking at a luxury car a car is going to be something somebody can spend large amounts of money in for instance be it modern car or old antique car 
and then be able to show it off, flaunt it off. So a lot of people may not, but a lot of people may drive their car up and down the highway, the streets. You know, it's something that can be showing off. You know, the fashion, the clothing, you can wear it. Then you also jump into jewelry. This is another thing at one point, it's always going to be in, but it may not be in fashion at the time. So you can take jewelry, you know, jewelry's made a massive comeback and with the rope chains and the watches it's played a massive role but they always are tied to something that represents wealth and that's going to be gold you know and when i say gold and silver ain't in fashion when you look at gold and silver now i'm referring to coins here it's one of those things where the only time you get to see it or even flaunt it isn't exactly what i'm doing right now show and tell for instance this is the first time all of these coins have ever got together in this in this setup right here it's not something where you know, you can actually walk down the high road and have these hanging off your neck, for instance. It's just not fashionable, but it never has been fashionable. But this is where now a lot of people divert their funds towards. Yes, their influence may be, yes, it has a massive following behind it, but gold and silver just don't have that following. I think because it's money, real money, but you still see people with, for instance, wads of cash, you know, making it rain in the strip club or something. That's even fashionable to have something like that. So when I say it's not fashionable, it's just not known to have it out and on display and on show but it's never supposed to be like that but when you look at one ounce high premium coins for instance and you want to really reel in the big money older money so old money already knows the situation and know what time it is you know it's auctions a lot of the older gold coins older older ones demand massive premiums when we're going back now and looking at the younger generation it needs to be brought into fashion because that's how they see and go about you know spending the big bucks on certain things for instance you could take something like cryptocurrency you know also millennials making a killing there so there is a lot of money to be made but it sometimes just needs to be dragged into fashion so how and what do I see the future in terms of one ounce high premium coins and making it fashionable? Maybe as we all know, when something hits the news, so these are the five subs. So these are a little over one ounce, but I class them as one ounce. So I do think they're 39 grams or something like that. So, you know, this is the 2017. When we're talking the one ounce um, high premium coins, they already start off, you know, it, I think the plus, when we're looking at other things that cost absolutely nothing or can be worth nothing, they cost, you could be paying anywhere from 100% over spot price, 50%. It's not too insane when you're looking at individual coins. You know, at best, you're doubling the spot price. Um, when I'm looking at all of these coins, for instance, I think these do fantastic when you grade them and sell them individually. So this is the five subs here. So these things already have a track record of doing well if i were to pick up one and say something more modern that's got a fantastic track record behind it this also can do well but can it continue to keep on doing well to draw the attention i believe so when you get the rush of people flocking towards metals for instance when we get the next spike you know anything can happen but we all know gold is already seen as wealth so there's not really a lot to worry about there you're not going to have no issues of the whole getting in daunting or is it worth something you know you have people with gold watches for instance so people know gold younger people i'm referring to mainly here can associate gold as well straight away you have people with gold jewelry so it's not going to be a hard problem this is why with my gold high premium coins a lot of them there wasn't with my silver high premium there's a lot of trial and error with my gold high premium it was more i know what i wanted to pick up and i know it's going to be a hit for me there wasn't a lot of trial and error you have to really pick right out there now there's tons tons of hundreds upon hundreds of one ounce gold high premium coins it, it is a minefield just like in the whole entire collector coin market but you have to pick right and if you do pick right your coin should appreciate you know yearly and that, that's what you would expect if you purchased or put a large amount of money into art into you know fine wine into the fashion i'm referring to into the cars it's going to be when you're paying that premium for something and you're looking at it as somewhat of an investment and you believe it's an investment you want to see it appreciating in price and when i'm saying should you buy one ounce gold coins i'm just giving my own you know experience and what i believe and i think the coins i'm showing and i picked up will and do do that greatly so i think as time moves on you know and things pick up and we get our spike just because it's tagged to all things that are in fashion already i.e jewelry watches like i just mentioned um 
it definitely will have its time where gold coins will be more of appeal to all generations. And that's where I feel, you know, and this was addressing the original misconception I was referring to when people say, you know, it's a, a small buyer's market, secondary buyer's market. You know, it's a bit too much to chew off. If it becomes 10,000, for instance, or this one ounce coin becomes 20,000, there'll be no buyers. There's buyers right now buying T-shirts at those insane premiums buying bags you know at those insane premiums so when you have something that's already associated with wealth i don't think it's going to be a drawback and you'll be struggling to find buyers when the time comes especially when you see a spike in spot price and it hits the news you know it, it I, as sad as it is you know people will be looking more so at a watch for instance that they can no longer afford because it now costs so much and you know they're going to be told well that's because the gold price has gone up so once you start looking into it i think these things are helping push the actual bullion side of things which is a shame as i mentioned you would have thought they would have looked here first but people will know this is what the price you have to pay i'm referring mainly to the gold here because this is the plus I see with it. It's not known as an industrial metal. Um, industry doesn't view it like that. And I think the general population doesn't view it like that. They know it's a wealth metal. And I'm referring to it just as that. It's, it's known mentally, subconsciously or consciously as a metal of wealth. So I don't think the misconception of it being too high and struggling to find buyers at a later date is going to hold any weight. So that's been my thought and process when I've picked up all of these coins that you can see here. Um, will it be fashionable? Yes, I believe so, because it's really associated with many other things. If I was to answer the question as to why you should or should you, I would say the pros, the main top pros would be one, when you're looking at stuff like this, you're never going to have to worry about a situation where you know, you come back to it, especially with the modern stuff, it being silver, for instance, and it's got some type of spots all over it. Yes, you're in gold. There's most definitely situations when you're looking at the copper spots, if you can see that there, that will always be an issue, but, and this is on a proof coin. Once again, it, 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 it's not worry-free, but I would sooner have a copper spot that could be fixed by myself or send in for conservation to one of the grading services than a milk spot where there's no solution. You know, it's pants down. That's going to be the number one plus side there. You don't want to buy, you know, a piece of art and at a later date find out the canvas is rotten or it's got an issue where it's a 50-50% chance. You don't want, I think it's literally, I now believe it's criminal that, you know, they can sell mints, can sell these things and know that they have a ticking time bomb attached to them. I think if anything, if they made it or clearly stated in the small print that the silver coin you're buying at a later date has a 50% chance of spotting up, which is going to ruin the proof finish that we're highlighting here. No one's going to purchase these things. You wouldn't buy a car knowing that the paintwork could erode at some point in time and there was a 50% chance of that happening. But nevertheless, when we're talking gold, that's one less issue you most definitely don't need to worry about. Um, secondly, as a pro towards whether you should or should not buy one ounce high premium coins and mine here, it's always going to be a, a metal, and I'm talking about gold here, that's associated with wealth. So it's always going to be a plus once again. So, so you shouldn't have nothing to worry about there, putting your money into a high premium coin. If you pick right, thirdly, your coin should appreciate over time, regardless of the spot price was to tank 50% now. You know that if you grade your coin, the last selling point it was doing even on the secondary market rounds, it should keep on going up. You wanna be putting your money into a coin that's gonna do exactly that. If you're spending a high premium, and I look at a lot of my high premium gold coins that way. You know, I've always mentioned that my foundation is my priority, you know. I wanna sell these coins and buy more foundation, but if I hold on to them, I don't want it to be an issue. And I think would be, massive amount of um, new coins we're constantly getting there is a chance of these getting washed out or diluted but if you pick right and you pick from the right mint that shouldn't be an issue we all know the Royal Mint for instance the US Mint has a fantastic track record Libertad's is a, a long running thing I don't think these even in these older designs here it's always going to be a date run when somebody's looking at these coins. I think they'll always be in fashion. I'd like to think that everything I'm showing here has somewhat of a, a decent track record or, you know, it can really last the distance. If you take a look at the giraffe here, 
this was off of a good long run series that are German mint producers and that's the wildlife coins and I think this was the first in their gold run so it has increased in price but whether it's liquid and I could really cash in those gains is another thing but we'll see at a later date but this is going to be my only run up guys once again if you ever do want to you know get close and intimate with your gold this is the only way you can really do it start a channel or you know um, find yourself in a dark corner funneling your high premium priced pieces but Will it ever change? I don't think so. And I don't think it's supposed to, you know, gold and silver or real money and wealth is always supposed to be viewed like this. You don't exactly go to your bank and want to fill your cash notes all the time. You just know it's there. It comes in this fun format. For many, this is good enough. For many, they keep them locked up in a safe and, you know, you're not supposed to leave this stuff out on the desk or whatever. But everybody has their own ways of enjoying their gold and silver. So if you also do, please let me know how you go about doing that. If you do want to get close and into it with it at times, you know, caress, love, serenade your metals. But I'm going to wrap this one up, guys. But this has been should you buy a one ounce high premium gold coin. So let me know your thoughts and opinions on that. Do you believe or have that thought that, you know, they're too expensive and you can only lose money? I don't think I have a different view when looking at one ounce high premium or even gold high premium as opposed to silver high premium so you know my views are totally different on that and i may get into a silver one at a later date but once again let me know your thoughts and opinions down below in the comments guys if you haven't done so already please do go ahead and subscribe and i'll catch you guys on the rebound